Hi, so in a previous video I showed you how to set up database mail and I'm going to expand on that concept. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you how to write a query and actually email it through the uh, database mail to um, a mailing list um, and actually have that query as part of an attachment. So the reason why you want to do that is because lots of times SQL Server uh, will send out alerts based on errors and exceptions which is actually generated by the database but sometimes you want to do more than that you you want to um, send out queries or send out alerts that are based on certain business logic you know whether it's monitoring the growth of several customer databases that you have on several distributed servers or whether um, you are using say a table as a job queue and you want to monitor how many uh, items are in a queue at a certain time or if it's uh, overloaded or stuff like that so uh, sometimes you really do need the business logic aspect of it so what I'm going to demo here is I I created a query that actually monitors SQL Server agent jobs and uh, if it goes over five minutes here, I'm going to create a query and send it out. So you'll, you'll notice this is the query I'm actually going to run. And I'll show you actually how to put this into SQL Server Agent. So you have a SQL Server Agent job that per periodically runs to monitor uh, other jobs or to monitor whatever you want, you know, whether it's database growth, as I mentioned before, or you know uh, the queue size or something else uh, transaction throughput you know stuff like that um, so in this example I, I created a simple query uh, so the first thing I do I, I'm actually using a global temp table here and uh, I'll, I'll go through some tips uh, that you might run into when you actually put this into SQL Server agent um, which is why here I, I actually have uh, quote identifier on and I'm using a global temp table is because sometimes when it's when you're using database mail uh, the query that you write and that you pass into the database mail store procedure doesn't understand uh, certain quotes or uh, certain relative uh, kind of uh, where, where you actually created the temp table versus where it's actually running against the database so you might run into issues like that using database mail which is why I'm using global temp table here um, but uh, to get back on track here um, so I set my threshold to five minutes uh, I'm gonna get every SQL Server agent job that's running over five minutes uh, be because um, you know t you might set it to 20 minutes or 30 minutes but this is really just the demo so here's my query for doing that so I'm gonna send out a report as an attachment as a text file attachment of uh, all the jobs that are running over that period of time um, and if there's any rows that actually come back then I actually send the email if there isn't any rows then I don't send the email so here's where I construct my email and as usual I'm using here uh, SP send DB mail and I I construct my query up here it, it takes string as a query so I, I actually queried the results here whoops uh, let me expand that I actually queried the results here of my query into this global temp table and I'm selecting it here passing this query into the store procedure SPDB mail and uh, you know I have other variables here that that store procedure takes such as the attachment file name so I constructed a file name here based on the date and time I constructed an email body of what server what database server it came from what instance it came from um, and you know stuff like that so uh, so here is an emailing list if if you want more emails just separate it by semicolon and if you remember in my previous uh, video where I set up the database mail I set up a profile called monitor email profile and if 
If uh, you're not familiar with how to do that, just uh, look at my video on how to set up database mail, which is a prerequisite for doing this because without database mail, you can't use this extended store procedure to actually send out mail. So um, this is basically all there is to my query. And so I'm going to just run this. And you'll notice here in the bottom, it said it found one row. And the reason why I found one row is because I, I actually created this fake job here to run 24 hours um, j just for this demo. So it, it just runs nonstop. Uh, so I, I executed my uh, queries here and my T-SQL here and um, it should have sent out an email so I'm gonna check my so let me go back up here so you'll notice I, I sent it to this address and I actually did receive it so this is the email that I got which is alert long running jobs over a lot of time and you'll see that's the subject that I had in the email. Uh, the body that I constructed is the body I constructed here. You'll see the server name is Soundwave uh, Instant SQL 1. And here's the query that it attached. And if I open up the query, uh, it's a text file, so I'm going to download it. You'll, you'll notice the name of the file was nicely uh, created to be the date and time which is what I have here as the date and time and actually let me download it and if I open this you'll see this is the query that it runs so that's how you set up a query as an attachment sending it to a distribution group for alerts and again, you're you're gonna do this for several reasons. Um, you know, whether it's some business logic or some type of warning that that is, uh, you know, within very specific to your application that you want to keep track of. So, um, so uh, you know, that's how you do that. That's uh, that's how you set up the query. Now, I'm gonna take this whole thing here and I'm gonna create a job for it so I'm gonna to go to SQL Server Agent Jobs and I'm gonna create a new job and I'm gonna call it Monitor Long Running Agent Jobs and I'm gonna add a step Long Running Jobs and I'm gonna paste the entire code that I had here into here and it'll just work so um, I'm just gonna click OK and if I want I could set up a schedule normally I would set up a schedule I'll run it every two hours to, uh, so daily re recurring So I'm going to write it daily and it's going to recur every two hours and you'll see it occurs every day every two hours between the whole day basically and I'm going to click OK so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run it manually but it's going to run every two hours to monitor these jobs and you'll notice if I go back here, another one is sent to me because the job that I had below runs forever. And there you go. That That's how you set up a recurrent job that uh, is based on business logic or very specific logic versus just a simple error or exception that's thrown by the system. So uh, thank you for watching.